Hey guys and girls, welcome back to this new video series on my beautiful channel. And if you're new, then just welcome to this channel. I really appreciate that you're here. Uh, this is a, just an intro video for this new series. Now, I never really made a tutorial series. I just made an example series and, and a bunch of game development series. Now, sure, you can learn from those. And, and if you rather do that, that's fine. Uh, but I thought I'd just go through what I have um, and where this fits in just really, really quickly. Um, something that might help is the the tutorial, the C++ example videos. Now, the difference between this series and that one is that examples, uh, although I teach you everything in detail, it's still by examples. So, so we make small programs and stuff like that. And, and that's fine, right? And that's really good. Maybe you should go watch that. Uh, but this series is more like uh, point to point. What is a type? What is a function what is a class and stuff like that so not really in examples in the same way but i'll refer a lot to this examples video series uh, and then i have all the game development series in c++ where i also go through stuff um, as i i make a game for example a simple rpg game or a sfmo game and stuff like that and all this stuff is linked below where you can go watch if you want to but yeah that's where this fits in so let me just start you off by saying that if you go to learncpp.com it's a really good place for source of like helping you find errors and, and just like um, learning all of these small things uh, so it's really good if you want to do this while watching the videos that's great uh, but you can you can just make it just by watching the videos so let me just start off by creating a new project so you can download Visual Studio community uh, from Microsoft's homepage it's completely free and just use it because it's really nice I like it it's clean it's it has a nice design and uh, it helps you out with a bunch of stuff otherwise you can use stuff like code blocks or whatever um, so yeah let's just start off by making a new so file new project and if you're using Visual Studio 2017 you want to do Windows desktop wizard otherwise you want to do Windows console application if you have a older uh, Visual Studio so let's just do this I'm gonna put it somewhere else I'm gonna go to here let me see YouTube. This is, I'm just gonna put it somewhere where I can find it. You can put it wherever you want. Um, I'm gonna try to find it. There we go. Wait, YouTube projects. There we go. And then I'm just gonna put it in there. C++ tutorial. So C++ tutorial is what I'm gonna call it. And Windows Desktop Wizard for Visual Studio 2017. Empty project. You wanna remove these two. Everything else is okay. Console application. Empty project. Okay. There we go. Now I got a lot of tips from my other series that I go too fast sometimes. And, and I really don't want to do that. I just want to help you guys out. That's the main point. So don't be afraid of C++. That's number one tutorial, right? That's, that's the number one point. Don't be afraid. It's really simple. Just think of it as you talking to your computer. All right? You're talking to your computer and you're telling it what to do. And in a certain language, right? So there are different languages. Everything gets compiled down to hardware code anyway which computer understands C++ and stuff all of this is just to make it easier for humans to write code right you can go and write in the hardware code if you want but it's really hard right it's really hard to comprehend so all of these languages C++ included uh, for better or worse have their own languages uh, um, their own grammar to talk to your computer basically so that's a fundamental basic the program you just downloaded is called an IDE all right, it's, it, it's, it stands for uh, development environment or something like that. Just, just, just Google it. <laughs> I know what it means, but I'm just, it's just not on my tongue right now. But you can do that. Uh, uh, integrated, develop, integrated development environment or something like that. Just Google it. Um, basically, what it does is it helps you compile your code. And it helps you with errors and checking for errors and stuff like that. And it has a bunch of nice shiny features right and you, you don't really need that because you have something called a compiler now a compiler is like google translate for your computer so whatever language you're writing uh, if you have a compiler for it it will change that code you just wrote to hardware code so you can basically write your code in notepad and compile it using the cmd you know this thing and just have your code somewhere and just write g plus plus something something and then it will compile that into hardware code and an exe file so enough about that enough babbling 
I know. Hope I'm not going too fast. But whatever. Let's just start off with basic C++. Just make a right click somewhere in your one of these folders uh, and a new file, a CPP file. And we'll just call it main. You can call this whatever you want. Remember that it doesn't have to be main. But you can call it main. So I just created a main file here. Now I zoomed in a bunch. I'm glad it zoomed in for me. Whoops, that's in a video. I don't know what that is. I don't, oh, whoops. It's a macro button. Okay, so we're here. This is beautiful, right? Now the first video is not gonna be about anything special. It's just creating this project and talking about this main function because we're gonna need a int main empty parentheses two brackets return zero crazy voodoo magic happening right here insane this is crazy this is just like what is this a program how is this a program my dude this is insane so let's just talk about this every program needs a main function this is a function this is the main function so this is a function head Everything up here is called the function head and now it includes a bunch of stuff. It includes the type and we'll talk about all this. Don't, don't freak out. Don't freak out. Name, big word now, parameters, big, big, big word. So the type, return type actually, let me just write that, return type, main, the name, we can call this, we have to call this main because our program or computer is going to look for a main function. So one function at least has to be main and it has to be in this file right here. So this is your skin. This is like your body. These are all your organs and stuff. And this is your skin holding your whole program together. The name of course, and the parameters in here. Now this is empty. So we don't have any parameters, but that's stuff we can send from outside in here and do stuff in here. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. Don't freak out. Like I said, Return type as well, we'll talk about that. Here I'm returning a zero. All you have to know right now is that the return type has to match the thing being returned. So I'm typing return, a number, and you have to end every, every statement or every line of code statement, everything you wanna do with a semicolon. That means, okay, I'm finished doing this, go on to the next thing. So this has to match this. Now I can, if you have a return in a function, you have to return. That's why I have to return in main. Basically what this does, not to confuse you too much anymore, we'll take everything step by step. This does, this end, ends the program. Basically it just sends a zero out to the computer, I think something like that. And it says, okay, I wanna quit the program now. Okay, then it will quit. Because if I run this, nothing's gonna happen. It's just gonna start and quit. There we go, started and quit. So a program is always a file in C++. A program, everything is read from left to right. Let me just type that left to right and down. So it's going to go left, right. When there's nothing more here, it's going to go down, left, right, nothing more down, left, right. So everything from top to bottom like that. So if you write something here and you expect to change it up here, that's not going to work because it hasn't happened yet. But the other way around works. So if you create something here, change it down here, that works. So just remember that left to right and down. I know that's a lot of teachers don't teach that, but it's confusing sometimes. Like when can I change stuff? Well, you can only change something after it's been created and that's left to right and down again for the hundredth time. But yeah, so what I wanna do in this tutorial just to end it um, is we create a project, we created a main function. Okay, we wanna print to the console okay so to do that we're gonna have to do something else we're gonna have to include a library and that's done by typing don't freak out io stream is a library don't freak out i'll tell you what this is so imagine you're in the library right and there's a bunch of books and you want to create something or no no better better yet maybe imagine you're in a lego store all right, and you have a box with you, like you're gonna put all the Lego pieces you want to build your big machine uh, in that box, right? But you don't have them from the start. So, and other people made these pieces. So these are basically pe Lego pieces you're including to your project that you can snatch functionality out of to use in your program. 
and one IO stream is one of these Lego pieces, libraries they're called. So I stands for in, O stands for out and stream. So this is in out stream of data. And usually this is to the screen or from the keyboard to the program. So we want to do something to the screen, right? We want to print something to the screen. We want to say, hey, to you guys or hey to whatever. You can type whatever you want in here. So basically what you do is you do STD colon colon. I have this funny name. STD C out. There's also a C in. Yes, there's also a C in. For those of you who guessed that, you're really smart. All the other guys are smart too. But STD colon colon C out. STD stands for standard template something 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 it's just a standard library of stuff now io stream every function here is part of this namespace it's called don't freak out again you don't have to you don't have to do that uh, you don't have to think about that too much right now but we, this is just something you need right now to call c out this is the actual function this is a stream out stream operator all right and you need this every you can you can like link stuff together these two two arrows like this then we're gonna say hello world in a string literal std and line so we want to print something remember left to right we want to print something start the stream say what we want to print this is a string literal anything between two quotation marks is a string literal all right literal means it's not a variable it's just something right here and now which is a string We'll talk about that later as well when we look at variables. But still, this is what we want to print. Another stream, like uh, continue the stream. I'm finished with this part. Put something else into the stream. We're going to put a end line character in. This is also a functionality in the STD library. Don't have to think about it too much. You can also do this. I know this is confusing, but whenever the computer or the compiler sees a backslash n, in any string literal, I can write it here as well, backslash n. Whenever it sees this from right to left, it sees this. It's going to be like, okay, you want a new line here. You want me to skip a line and go down. This is usually faster than end line. So I, I suggest learning this. But you can write std end line as well. If you want to skip writing std all the time, I don't recommend you using this right now. You can do this. Using namespace std. Then I can just remove this. And I can write end line or any kind of std functionality without having to write that first prefix thingy. But I don't like using this. It's harder to type. You have to type more stuff. But it's good learning it this way, I think. Because it can cause errors further, further on in the future. Uh, which I'll also explain later on. But don't worry about that. Just make sure and revel in the beauty of this beautiful program where we're printing hello world. Now, if I run this, some of you might have a problem. It's just going to run and quit directly. Yep, it didn't crash, it just quit because it, it reached this. We want to pause it somehow so we can see this beautiful print. Now, one way I think you can do it, you can, you can uh, start without debugging and then it won't quit as far as it, as long as it like, it doesn't close down the window, right? So, hello world, it was printed. Let me just go ahead and uh, make this bigger. Um, let me see, how do you do that? Properties. There we go. 36. Boom. Hello world. And then if I press something, oops, sorry. If I press something, we're going to quit. Another way you can do this is you can write system pause right here. So when it reaches this part, whoops, semicolon, remember that. And uh, when it reaches this, it just pauses it, doesn't close the window directly. And you have the hello world here. Now you can type anything in here, whatever you want. It's going to change that. Uh, you can write a bunch of stuff after here. You can make another like string right here. Maybe you want to write hey again. Something like that. It doesn't matter. It's a stream. You can put a bunch of stuff in here. And this is useful for reasons that we'll talk about a little later. But for now, yes, that's it. That's the tutorial. And that's good to know. So there you go, guys and girls. That's the first tutorial in this tutorial series. It was about printing out to the screen and creating a project. In the next video, we'll probably talk about getting something in from the keyboard and printing it out to the screen. 
So we'll just start off with all the basics and then we'll go to variables and functions and classes and all the fun stuff. But I recommend reading uh, stuff here and watching the other videos if you want. Um, but yeah, this will be a really in-depth tutorial on C++. So yeah, thanks for watching again. Take care, best of luck, and I'll see you in the next one, right? Bye-bye.